We're going to talk about why you should avoid moving to Florida unless you can handle these 10 negatives. Hey everybody, my name is Craig Cunha. I am a real estate agent with John R. Wood Properties right here in Southwest Florida. And if this is your first time to the channel and you would like to know more about what it's like to live, play, eat, sleep, and buy real estate on the Gulf Coast, then this is the channel for you. So go ahead and subscribe so that you don't miss any of the future videos. And please leave a comment and hit the bell to be reminded whenever a new video comes out. I'm getting calls from people every day asking about what it's like to live in Florida and what they can expect, and I just love it. So if you've got a question, you've got to call, text, or email, and I'll be sure to get right back to you. Well, everybody wants to tell you about all the wonderful things about living in Florida. There's quite a few negatives too, and we're gonna run through 10 of them. I've got a bonus one, especially for 2020 at the end, and if you're like me, number 10 is really gonna resonate with you. Anyway, we're gonna start with number one, the weather. Everybody talks about the weather. Yes, beautiful weather sometimes. But we're gonna talk about the things that you're not gonna like about the weather. Obviously, it's hot, hot, hot for at least four months out of the year. And I'm talking touch anything metal or any surface, it's burning hot. So at first you're seeking the sun because you're vacationing, you wanna have that bronze tan, then you're gonna start running from the sun. You're gonna have sunscreen on. You're going to have long sleeves and big brim hats. You're going to have a shady spot that's your particular favorite that you're gonna seek out. It's just gonna happen. You can only take so much sun. Then the humidity. This is probably a little bit more for some of the ladies with the hair and how it frizzes in the humidity. Humidity is very high here, obviously. We're surrounded with water, so that's what you can expect. Guys, you might sweat through your shirt. I know I have a habit of doing that at times. Yeah, it sounds gross, but it's life. You're gonna do it. Now the part that really gets bad about the weather is the rain, the really heavy rain, the lightning that comes with it. Now, our lightning isn't just lightning. We are the lightning capital, I'd like to say of the world. We have alarms on the buildings, on the schools and the golf courses, so that when the lightning is within 10 miles of that location, these alarms go off. And you cannot resume your activity in most cases, you can personally choose to, but that might be uh, a little bit dicey. Pay attention to those horns. It will be one long horn uh, at the outset, and then it'll be three short bursts that will clear it when it's all over. Uh, but during that time, it's a 30 minute window and you will not be able to be outside uh, at that time. So many times with our rainstorms comes a lot of wind. Uh, it could be destructive at times, and this is not even the tropical storms like we just had. Ada just worked its way through. She hit us twice, once from the south, once from the west. So we do get the tropical storms. It is windy, storm surge can be a problem, which that was probably the bigger problem on this particular storm than it normally is. Um, then we have the hurricanes. Obviously you've heard of those and we do have preparations in place for that. Something you need to know about hurricanes, if you're going to be here and tough it out, get your supplies in advance. If you wait till the end, you're not going to have supplies. We're talking multiple cases of water, gallons of water, enough uh, food, non-perishable food, because you may not be able to cook or keep it cool, obviously. If the power goes out, you can get a generator, but don't try finding a generator the last minute. They won't be there. Now, what also follows some of these bigger storms is flooding. We have a lot of standing water in some areas. We have a very low elevation. Flood insurance is normally something you wanna have on your home. Uh, especially if it's recommended. If you pay cash for a house, you don't have to have it, but again, it's your investment. I would suggest having it. Now, number two, the, the power outages that follow some of these storms can be long lasting. So that's where the generator would come in if that should happen. But we also get power surges and these power surges and power uh, outages can happen randomly throughout the day. And in my case, I work from home. So when the power goes out, so does my internet. So now I'm shot. Can't get a whole lot done that way, can we? So with these power outages, just be aware that they can happen. You'll be resetting clocks all the time. I know I have to reset my microwave, my coffee maker, my, my alarm clock in the room, a ton of things to reset when it happens. It's annoying, but it's going to happen. Also, our power company is one power company for the area in which you live. We have LCEC and we have FPNL, but you have the service based upon where your address is. There is no choice. Number three is the people here and their attitudes. Yes, the attitudes. It can be the people that live here. It can be the people visiting here. Just a couple things I've been noticing and you wanna know about this. There's a lot of impatience, entitlement, lack of courtesy. 
I mean, literally, you'll be racing somebody to get in line at a register. You'll be having to deal with somebody's lack of courtesy in holding a door open, saying thank you for holding a door open, returning their cart after leaving the store. These are all things that happen here on the regular. No idea why, doesn't seem to be a rhyme or reason to it, but it happens quite often. Number four goes right along with those attitudes, and it's poor service. You can expect poor service in some locations, and others it can be absolutely fantastic. However, I'm speaking directly to those poor service opportunities because there's a lack of urgency, and there's a lack of taking that extra step to help somebody. And it's not across the board, it's just certain individual. We went out to have a meal, and my other half wanted to sit in a certain location of the restaurant because it had a view and it was around everything that was going on in the area. And there was no seat left at the moment, but they wouldn't put us on a waiting list. Instead, they insisted on sitting us back towards where the kitchen goes and the bathrooms in a dark little corner. That wasn't happening. My other half jumped up, went to a server because the hostess wasn't so kind to help out and told her where she was going to sit and planted herself there if you're getting poor service, speak up or take care of it yourself. Number five, weeds take over everything. My backyard was beautiful at one time, all green, and the green was actually grass. Now, it's more weeds than I can handle, can't seem to get rid of them, had professional companies come out and do the spraying, nobody seems to be able to get this right, so I guess we're gonna go down a couple roads of weed and feed and whatever else we can try to find. Otherwise, I'm gonna rip the whole thing out and make it turf. <laughs> Number six, Vacationers are here half the year, if not closer to three quarters now. You're overrun with vacationers, snowbirds, call them whatever you like, but there's no urgency with what they're doing. So there's extra slow driving, there's sightseeing, just, just kind of this blase attitude of not needing to be anywhere. So it kind of slows you down. So if you're thinking that you're gonna commute somewhere really quickly, even with all the traffic, expect these slowdowns. Also, if you're going out to eat, expect longer lines that you're going to wait for and above all driving styles from all over the world yes i said all over the world so those driving styles come right into our area just have your head on a swivel and be sure you have insurance number seven is the wildlife yes it's all true there are gators there are snakes multiple kinds there are scorpions there are flying cockroaches <laughs> there are mosquitoes no um jellyfish iguanas, coyotes, fire ants, and something we call sand spurs. So if you're walking through a vacant lot, you'll have them attached to your shoelaces, pant legs, whatever. They're extra sharp. They will even stick in the tires of your bike if you run over them. So they're a nuisance, but all these wildlife things do exist in the area. I'm not gonna tell you they're not here because they are. Will you run into them a lot? Not necessarily. Prime example, I'm at a golf course just playing around a golf, hit the ball over towards the water on the left side fairway. As I go down the bank, there's a gator sitting within maybe six feet of my ball. Yeah, I took a drop somewhere else. I wasn't going after that one. Now, that wasn't his fault. That was my fault, bad shot. But another place I went was the Mayaka River and we decided to camp within this campground that was situated around the river. Well, lo and behold, we go to take our bike ride around there and literally gators all along the river. No idea, but there were signs posted saying not to go beyond a certain point, and this was probably a good reason why. So if you don't go looking for them, they're not necessarily gonna be in your way, but you could happen upon them, so be prepared. Number eight, coastal cities have a lot of canals and waterways, so use your GPS. Yes, GPS is a, a tool that you will definitely need until you get familiar with the roadways. You can be driving down a road and all of a sudden stopped in your tracks. No idea which way to go. Pull out your GPS. Make sure that you have it going. Once you learn the roadways, then it's all on you. With those canals that you could happen upon, cars do end up in them. So if you're driving at night and you're not familiar with the roadway, don't go over the speed limit. Don't go tearing down the road. You could end up in a canal. Number nine is tolls. Yes, Cape Coral has a toll into uh, into its area. There's no toll on the way back. Sanibel, same thing. There's a toll there. There's tolls up in the Orlando area, over in Miami, up and down the turnpike. Right now, I think most of the tolls are actually doing the license plate billing. So if you drive through, there's going to be a camera that will take a shot of your license plate and send the bill to you. You can go into your maps on your uh, cell phone 
and screen out toll roads if you really don't want to deal with them but we do have tolls in certain areas of florida while we're on that topic of travel one of the other huge negatives is if you're driving north whether it's on a motorcycle or in a car expect five hours minimum just to get out of the state so if you're one of those people that your preferred method to travel is by wheels underneath you you're gonna have an extended drive and it's the same view each time don't think you're gonna have something else because 75 and 95 are really way, the only two ways that you're gonna find your way out so it'll get repetitive number 10 this is the one that I deal with this is one I never had before I came to Florida and I didn't even notice it until a few years ago allergies it seems like something is always in bloom in Florida so this pollen is being thrown through the air the coastal breezes keep things stirred up so if you didn't have allergies before getting here you might find out you do have them a simple spray like a flonase or something like that can be very helpful um, I found that the pills don't really work for me uh, just the spray but be aware allergies could be an issue if you're living in Florida and the bonus that we're going to talk about this is specifically for 2020 because it's a brand new thing we don't have a lot of people wearing masks when you go out yes there's some places you can find people wearing masks but there's a lot of places that people do not wear them so if you're somebody that's very strict about having a mask on and you're highly offended if other people don't have one on don't go out in a lot of public places specifically don't go out to any kind of bar at night don't go out to any type of a, a nightclub don't go out to these large gatherings that you feel everybody should have a mask on because most times they're not going to so if you're not comfortable stay at home or stay away those are the 10 negative things that you would have to deal with when you're moving to Florida so if you can't deal with those 10 things maybe Florida isn't for you but if you learned anything with this video Go ahead and subscribe to the channel so you see all the future videos or watch one of these others that'll give you further insight to what it's like to live in the area. Also, if you have a question that you want an answer to, do a comment down below or you've got to call, text, or email because I've got your back when moving to the Gulf Coast.